for this page, past papers like to test students' knowledge of this area here, these three bullet points where the alkali metals react more vigorously as you go down the group and they'd like to know the outcome. And the higher tier material section here where they give you the word equation and the symbol equation between alkali and water. And for the flame test, these three steps here is important to memorize as well and the corresponding colors of the elements when they get burned. Where lithium produces red, sodium produces yellow, and potassium produces lilac. So let's go through some of the questions to see how they look like. So if we zoom in, sodium and potassium are both alkali metals. They are in group 1 of the periodic table. The word equation for the reaction between sodium and cold water is shown below. So as can be seen, sodium plus water equals sodium hydroxide plus hydrogen, which is shown in the higher tier material section here. Returning back to the exam question. So potassium also reacts with cold water. A small piece of potassium is dropped into a bowl of cold water. What would you see? So for two marks, they're basically asking you to regurgitate this bullet point here where it says potassium reacts more vigorously than sodium, that's one mark, it melts and burns with a lilac flame, that's two marks. So important to memorize all these guys. So the next question for one mark reads, potassium reacts with water much faster than sodium reacts with water, explain why. So use ideas about the loss of electrons from atoms. Well we know potassium is lower down in a group than sodium, so using the understanding and the aid of the revision guide over here, if we zoom in, where it reads, the alkali metals become more reactive because the outer shell gets further away from the influence of the nucleus. This makes it easier for an atom to lose an electron from its outer shell. So, so playing with the words, to answer the question, you would say potassium that has an outer shell that's further away from the influence of the nucleus. So this makes it easier for potassium to lose an electron from its outer shell. So you kind of have to apply the wording to the scenario of the question to get the one mark. And finally, rubidium. RB is also an alkali metal. It reacts with cold water. Write down the names of the two products of this reaction. So two marks for two missing gaps. Each gap equals one mark. So with the aid of the revision guide and this higher tier material section here, although we're given lithium, sodium, potassium, and not rubidium, um, from the outcomes shown, we can kind of work out what the answer is because we can see that a hydroxide is formed from the alkali metal. So like in this case, it would be potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide, and they all give off hydrogen. So therefore, if it's rubidium and water, what you would get is rubidium hydroxide and hydrogen. So returning to the exam question, to get to two marks, you would write rubidium hydroxide and hydrogen. The next question is about flame tests. So let's zoom in and begin. So John and Leah do some flame tests. They test the chemicals in three bottles. One bottle contains sodium chloride, another potassium chloride, and a third lithium chloride. So the labels are missing from the bottles. John and Leah want to find out which chemical each bottle contains. So describe how they do a flame test. You may wish to draw a label diagram to help your answer. So you're asked to describe how to do a flame test for two marks. So with the aid of the revision guide, you would know to recall these three steps here. Each step here is actually worth a mark. Although you won't get three marks because the question only awards two marks, it's better to write all three steps to help secure your two marks. So zooming in, you would write, a piece of the chrome wire is dipped in concentrated hydrochloric acid to clean it. It's a potential one mark. Then the wire is dipped in the compound, a potential one mark. The wire is then put into a Bunsen flame. Each compound would produce a different colored flame. Then you would write, lithium produces red, sodium produces yellow, and potassium produces lilac. All this is very important to secure your marks. So memorize this stuff. And the next question reads, Lithium, sodium, and potassium are group 1 elements. Sodium reacts with water. A gas which burns with a squeaky pop is made. Write down the name of this gas. So for one mark, sodium reacts with water to produce which gas? With the aid of the revision guide, we are told that here, sodium plus water produces sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. So the answer for the one mark is hydrogen gas. So an alkaline solution is also made. What is the name of the substance which makes the solution alkaline? So for one mark, as we've just seen, it's sodium hydroxide. Had it said lithium reacts with water, you would then write lithium hydroxide. Had it said potassium reacts with water, you would say potassium hydroxide. So the next question, the group one metals all have one electron in their outer shell. When they react, they lose this outer electron. Potassium is more reactive than sodium. Explain why. So for one mark, we know that potassium is further down the group than sodium. And this is a similar question to what we've seen already. They're basically asking you to recall this and manipulate the wording a bit where the outer shell of potassium is further away from the influence of the nucleus than sodium. So this makes it easier for potassium to lose an electron from its outer shell. Basically, potassium is a bigger element than sodium because it's got more energy levels, uh, more shells, which interferes with the influence that the nucleus has on the outer electron. So therefore, potassium being further away 
is less affected by the influence of the nucleus. Therefore, potassium, with its outer electron being further away from the influence of the nucleus, is easier to have its electron removed from its outer shell. The next question is a nice easy two marks question on the group 1 elements. So if we zoom in, it reads, going down group 1, the reactivity of the alkali metals, as we know, increases, because with the aid of the revision guide, we are told here, the alkali metals react more vigorously as you go down the group. Um, that's mainly because, as we know, the influence of the nucleus on the outer electron is less as you go down the group. That's why it reacts more vigorously, and that's why the reactivity increases as you go down the group. So the answer here is increases. And a solution of sodium hydroxide, NaOH, is made, which is alkaline. Um, all hydroxides are alkaline, just something you need to know. So the answer is alkaline. Two marks, just like that. And the next question for two marks, complete the table to estimate the melting point of astatine and the boiling point of fluorine. Use ideas about trends down on group. Well, basically, they're asking you to recall this information here, higher tier material section. If we zoom in, astatine has a melting point of 302 and a boiling point of 337, and fluorine, melting point minus 220, boiling point minus 1A. So basically, you need to memorize all of this table, to be honest. So you know, going back to the exam question, Astentine will be about 302 here, and as for fluorine, the boiling point will be about minus 1A8. So this is a pretty hard one because it's really testing your hardcore memory here. So next question, sodium reacts with chlorine to make sodium chloride, right? A balanceable equation for this reaction. So basically, they're asking you about here, where it's, the example we're given is lithium and chlorine, but it could be any group one element, and in this case, the exam question is asking about sodium and chlorine. So you put 2Na, plus Cl2 equals 2 NaCl to give you the full two marks. So six marks, not so easy this one, but just to give you guidance on what you need to memorize. And this is a bit of a revision on the atomic number and mass numbers, where this question is about atomic structure and atom of phosphorus can be represented by, as shown. The table shows some information about this phosphorus atom, complete the table. So the number of protons is 15. The number of electrons will also be 15. And the number of neutrons, of course, from the mass number, you take away the atomic number to give you number of proteins. So 31 take away 15 will give you 16. So two marks plus six marks, just like that. And the next question reads, chlorine, bromine, and iodine are halogens. The halogens are group seven of the periodic table. How does the reactivity of the halogens change down the group? So for one mark, we know that the, um, the halogens are less reactive as you go down the group, as mentioned here as well. The reactivity of the halogens decreases as you go down the group. So therefore, you would just write decreases as you go down the group for one mark. So the next question, look at the word equation. Chlorine plus sodium bromine produces sodium chloride plus bromine. So in this reaction, chlorine displaces bromine from sodium bromine solution. In another experiment, iodine is added to sodium bromine solution. There is no reaction. Explain why. So for one mark, you have to recall your understanding of how this works, where it's less reactive as you go down. So therefore, chlorine is more reactive than bromine, and bromine is more reactive than iodine. So going back to the exam question, because chlorine, the order is chlorine, bromine, iodine, chlorine is more reactive than bromine, so chlorine will kick out bromine to produce sodium chloride, and the bromine is left on its own. So sodium chloride plus bromine on its own. However, if iodine comes along and tries to kick out bromine, it's not going to work because iodine is less reactive. So therefore, that explains why there is no reaction. So the order of reactivity is very important in answering these group 7 halogen questions. So to explain why for the one mark, basically iodine is less reactive than bromine. So moving on, look at the equation. It shows how a chlorine ion, Cl- is made from a chlorine molecule. Cl2 plus 2E- minus equals 2Cl-. Minus. So this is an example of reduction. Explain why. So for one mark, you're basically being asked to recall what the definition of reduction is. So with the aid of the revision guide and the mnemonic given oil rig, if we zoom in, Oil rig basically stands for oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons. This is actually a very valuable mnemonic to remember. Oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. So to answer the question for one mark, it is an example of reduction because there is a gain of electrons. Because as we know from oil rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. This next question is all about the oil rig mnemonic where oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. So if we zoom in, this question is about oxidation and reduction. Look at these equations. Which equation is an example of oxidation only? So as we know, oxidation is loss of electrons. We look for the equation where there's loss of electrons. And the only equation where it says minus electrons is equation D. So for this answer, it will be D for one mark. 
So next question, which equation is not an example of an oxidation or reduction reaction? So we look for an equation where it doesn't show a loss or a gain of electrons. And equation A shows a gain of electrons, which is reduction. Equation B, a gain of electrons, which is reduction. And we know these a lot of electrons, which is oxidation for this answer through process of elimination. So the answer has to be equation C. So the answer here is C. So here we have yet another oil rig question where oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. So the question reads, sodium reacts with water, a sodium ion Na plus is made as shown. So Na minus electron equals Na plus. So this is a loss of electrons. So what type of reaction is this? Well, if there's a loss of electrons and through the mnemonic oil rig, it has to be oxidation and explain your answer because there's a loss of electrons. So therefore two marks just like that.